channel if you're new karibu welcome if you're returning subscriber thank you so much for always making time to come and be with me so today i'm having a sit down <laughs> it's been a minute and um i just want to talk about um you know what has been happening with life on the motherhood uh, end yeah um aside from me being a travel vlogger i'm also a mom <laughs> And a wife but today i just want to give you an update on my motherhood side you know so um, my son has decided he does not want to breastfeed anymore <laughs> and um i'm happy i'm laughing uh, right now because the plan was to breastfeed him until he's two years old but he's just 15 months and he's already decided I've had enough mama. I can get off this thing now. I can survive without it. So yeah, let me just guys um, take you through how that happened. So I had a trip uh, out of town for like a week. And so I left my baby behind because I couldn't go with him uh, for this particular trip. And um, as usual, when I'm out of town and I'm not with him, I would always carry my breast pump and I'll just be pumping. So for this particular trip, you know it was just the same thing so here i was on my first day i pumped on my way to my destination and it was normal the milk flow was normal you know so the second day i was like i was pumping but then i went the entire day uh without pumping and i wasn't you know like too engorged to where i can't like stand it because back then i'll be very very engorged and it's painful and i'm leaking so it's very hard to just go a day without me pumping but this particular day which was the second day now after i arrived at my destination i was i was okay like i didn't pump that entire day until the evening and i was still fine like i was engorged yes but not to where i cannot stand uh, stand it you know so i get i get to the to, to, to my hotel room and i just take a shower i pump and yeah, I get rel some relative amount of, uh, you know, breast milk. And then the next day I woke up, I was like, so first thing what I do when I wake up and I'm away from him, I'll pump before I leave the hotel room or before I start the day. So the next morning I woke up and my boobs were just, you know, they were just there. <laughs> they were just there. <laughs> so I was like, should I pump? Should I not pump? Something told me not to pump. I just assumed it. I was like, I won't pump because ideally there's nothing to pump. Like I was just feeling like I'm okay. I was not engorged. So the third day I went the entire day without pumping. I still came back home. I was not engorged and I was not leaking. Like my boobs didn't have anything. Like I didn't still feel that urge to pump. And I was like, you know what? I won't pump. So I slept without pumping. And that was day three day four day five day six day seven i'm telling you that's how i went the, um you know the following days without pumping and my boobs were not hurting but i was not leaking of breast milk so i so after experiencing that i started now when i was almost coming back home i got worried i was like i've not pumped for three for actually four days i didn't pump and uh, that means the milk i have will not be fit enough for the baby to drink so i started getting worried and i was like what will happen when i get home will he want to breastfeed or will he have forgotten about the boob so what what i do when i'm away of course i'm with the breast and he cannot have breast milk we usually just uh, give him formula so i was like what will happen when i come back home will he want the boob will he want to breastfeed or he will just ignore or assume or he would have forgotten and everybody around me was telling me just forget about it that's how the boy is gonna stop breastfeeding so long story short i finished my trip and i came back home and i remember the first day he saw me of course he would cry because he'd missed me and that was it i tried to give him the boob but he just put his mouth and he you know he just i can't explain that <laughs> He just like he had i put the boob in his mouth but he didn't like suckle 
or anything you know so he just left it i was like hmm okay so that was, that was, that went on for like a week when we were just with him um and then i realized now the coming week he sort of started to remember that oh there was something interesting around this area so i would see him now slowly he would start to play around with my you know boobs he would try to like just lift up my clothes or just my top just to access the boob or just try to like you know um try to move his hand around my neck area trying to get his hand into the boob you know i was like hmm, wait a minute so i was like let me give him and see what's gonna happen so i gave him the boob and yeah of course he suckled but nothing nothing substantial is coming out you can see it it he, he he's he's having to like just suckle like three times before he can swallow so that automatically tells you like the supply is low that's basically how we stopped breastfeeding because from that we've not gone back it's been now a month <laughs> it's been a month of us not breastfeeding and yeah i didn't have to use a soul tape i hear there's so many there's so many people who use different methods to make their little ones stop breastfeeding uh some i hear you just like apply aloe vera on your nipple uh there's some who put like soul tape a black tape some put uh chili powder you know it's just all this uh formulas just to make sure that the baby stops breastfeeding so for us we didn't have to use that method i think i just needed to go away <laughs> for a week and it just happened so yeah um let me take you back uh through my breastfeeding journey i think it's an interesting uh, journey let's just look back i remember when i gave birth to my son um he we, we only stayed in the hospital for one day so i gave birth today and the next day we were discharged mostly because of covid uh, it was during the covid season so they really would keep you know people in the hospital if you really don't need to be there i remember the next day when we were supposed to be discharged the nurse still came and she still checked my, boob, my boobs again and she was like you're good to go you have enough milk so we went home and uh, you know everything was was fine that that day when we got home uh, just to take you back i remember before we gave birth to our son we had discussed with my husband and we agreed since i'm home i told him there'll be no need for me to buy a breast pump because i'll be home with the baby throughout so there's really no need for me to have a breast pump hmm the worst mistake of my life <laughs> looking back now i can say confidently that was like the worst mistake of my life <laughs> so the one with the baby in the house we were okay the baby was fine i was able to feed the baby and the baby slept and the one was perfect so day two comes and it's a normal day we continue with uh, you know setting a routine for the baby and mommy and i remember everything went on well and it was time for the baby to sleep and at night i put him to bed and he slept very well that night except for mommy <laughs> so i remember it was time for me to go to bed at 10 and i was engorged i was feeling so full by the time i was getting to 11 i couldn't sleep i honestly could not sleep my breasts were fully engorged painfully engorged I, I i just couldn't sleep i was trying to lay on the bed i can't i was leaking i was even soiling and you know soaking my clothes and the bed uh, the bed sheets it was it was crazy so i had to wake up because i was in so much pain and my breasts are so full i was like now what do we do so we wake up and we started googling what to do when someone is painfully engorged you know so we google and we find that you can actually express using your hand and so i you know went to the shower because there was no way i could just like i was soiled i was i just needed a shower so i went into the shower and you know i started uh, you know like expressing my boobs using my hands and yeah it was it was helping it was helping but still i was just at that point where now i feel like i have this a very hard stone on my boobs and for a minute i started to get scared because i was like wait a minute what if what if i'm having those breast issues you know and all that because like i had this very hard kind of something that felt like a stone on my boobs i was like oh my god anyway i kept you know expressing and just letting the you know uh the milk down and just expressing and expressing and expressing and at some point i felt okay there's enough relief so i finished uh, you know showering and i came out at this point my husband is so scared <laughs> 
because he's never experienced this he does not know how to help me you know he's like trying to tell me okay they're saying you can also do this it's just crazy you know so i remember out of all that fear he was like we need to get that breast pump we definitely need to get that breast pump i was like yeah from this experience we definitely need it i think the reason why i was probably overwhelmed with the you know the engagement is because i had fed my son enough and he was he was full but i still had so much milk and there was nowhere to take it i think that that is what led me to really be uh you know overwhelmed with the breast milk yeah so i remember we were able to sleep that night after expressing with my hands and the next morning <laughs> even before breakfast my husband was already at the shopping mall just to get a breast pump he was like i do not want to go through this again you know so he went to the shopping mall to get me a breast pump and this is what he got me this is what we got i don't know if you can see so it's called optimal so this is what we were using it's an electric uh, uh, breast pump this is the full compartment so you can express both of your boobs yeah at the same time but the other compartment is is not here i've not attached it but you can see this is where you now attach the other compartment yeah i i, I think i only used the two compartments just when we were starting out for the first two three months and then after that i just went with using just one it was just much easier for me to just use one so this is just an electric pump you can see you switch it on there you know so it first starts with uh, massaging your boob so it will just massage your boobs just to you know sort of like stimulate the boob to produce uh, milk and then after you're done stimulating or massaging it so you just press frequency and you can just play around with the settings you know you can minus like right now it's as 15 i used to like 15 because it's like the that's the the last the last uh, the last one and it was working so well so you can go all the way down to 13 12 all the way but i used to like it at uh, 15 and then you can see you can see what's happening you can see so this is where you put the your boob this is where you put the boob and of course it just pumps we got this for 260 dollars here in kenya and it served me really well and i had the intention of keeping it for the next babies <laughs> so i can say that um i really didn't struggle with the you know breast milk i i didn't have the struggle of like lacking milk and all um though i've seen the women who experience that the women who you know have issues with uh, enough milk supply for their babies so though the beauty these days i've seen there are all these uh, lactating cookies that you know you can eat i've seen there's lactating tea there's lactating porridge like there's all these things that are just being sold out there to help women you know with the milk supply so you can try them out i've personally not tried any um because i didn't i didn't really have two um but i've seen so many people online you know using so you can try it if you're struggling with uh, milk supply it can help you you know everything is about trying all these special cookies uh special lactation um what do you call it tea leaves lactation porridge they can be quite pricey so if you're if you're probably not able to afford it there's still natural foods that you can eat that can help boost your milk supply for me i would say what mostly what was working was wheat because i love chapatis a lot <laughs> i ate chapatis and chapatis really to um uh, really used to help me um black beans also help a lot black beans um what else what else what else um there was this particular cocoa that i used to um you know hate but because of you know breast milk and because i wanted enough supply i started uh, drinking it so it's like cocoa it's the one in an orange pack you can try that also it really really helps i'm just trying to give you the things that i know worked for me and also things are different and also when you're using these uh, natural foods you gotta be very careful also because some foods yes they help you with the the breast milk supply but then they tend to be very gassy and so they affect the baby 
and I experienced this firsthand. I really experienced it firsthand. So this is the thing. You eat uh, foods like beans, foods like kales, foods that are really gassy. You know the foods that are really known to be gassy, yeah? So I remember when I ate those kind of foods, like very, very gassy foods, my baby would really cry at night. And at first I thought it's just the normal crying for babies, you know, you're told babies will cry at night. So I thought that was the thing. But then I would notice their nights he doesn't cry, their nights he cries. So there was this particular day when he was really crying and my, I was with my sister. And so my sister asks me, what have you eaten today? So I tell her I've eaten ugali and kales. And she's like, that's, where the, that, that's the reason the baby is crying. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, when the baby, when you eat all these gassy foods, the gas also tends to go to the baby's stomach. And so that's why you see he's very, very uncomfortable. And I'm like, really? And she's so like, yeah, try to observe it. So avoid gassy foods, stay away from the gassy foods and see, like start even with tomorrow, see if he's going to cry. And I'm telling you, we did that. The next day I avoided gassy stuff and the baby did not cry. And I'm telling you the crying reduced when I started watching what I'm eating. So the trick is try and avoid all these gassy foods. Sometimes it's hard to avoid them, especially like the black beans because you want the milk for the baby. But when you can, try and avoid them. And if you have to, I would say maybe try and eat in the morning so that by the time it's evening, the baby has pooped everything and it has left his system. You get it? So the next thing I would say, I was very lucky. I was very, very lucky because... I have not struggled with cracked nipples. That is something I'm seeing so many women are complaining about. I personally have not experienced it, but it's cause I used this. These are nipple protectors. And I keep telling people to buy this thing. So these are nipple protectors. Yeah, these are nipple protectors, but I wasn't using this every day. Now, let me tell you the secret. Every time your baby is suckling, you can always feel. Yes, of course, the baby will latch and all that. But you know the kids who feed so much, you know. So at the end of the day, imagine somebody just sucking on your nipple. You know, suckling on your nipple. Suckling on your nipple. The entire, after every five minutes, after every five minutes, it's, it's going to be under pressure. And eventually the cracks will come. So what I noticed with mine, um, after breastfeeding the baby for like maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks, I would start to feel pressure, like on my nipple, you know, I'll start to feel, hey, that nipple is not okay, you know, so every time I would feel that, I would take this, and I would just put it on my nipple, like that, so you see, this is how you do it, so it, this is it, so you just attach it on the boob like that, so the nipple go, goes in here, you can see, the nipple goes in here it's sort of perforated you can see it's perforated so your nipples goes in here and the baby circles this so at the end of the day there's nowhere the baby is coming into contact with the with the nipple and i would use this for two or three days and after that when i after two or three days i feel the nipples now are, no, are, are okay you know you can feel it so i would feel the nipples are now okay and i'll stop using it so I'll continue feeding the baby normally with the, you know, just without this for like another time. Uh, sometimes we'll even go a month before I can start to feel like, okay, there's, there's pressure. I need to start protecting this nipple. So that is what really helped me. And I can tell you for sure, I have not had to apply nipple cream. I've not had to struggle with the cracked nipples. I do not even understand that pain. Uh, so this really helped me and it's not even expensive guys. This is not me promoting nobody has paid me to promote th this kind of thing It's just my me trying to help any woman out there who is struggling with you know breastfeeding So this I bought at only a hundred and fifty Kenya shillings. That's like a dollar and fifty cents Only and you save yourself all this pain because I hear when I I read I'm in so many groups where, you know, mothers share their stories and sometimes you read, you know, these struggles with nipple, uh, I mean, with, with, um, with cracked nipples and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, it's scary. So avoid that. You can use this and this will prevent you even from using nipple creams. And you can see it's the same material that your baby will probably use when you're giving them um, baby pacifiers or, you know, or the bottle. You see, it's just the same material. So it won't affect your child in any way. Yeah, try it and let me know.
I'm not giving this away, guys. I'm still keeping this, like I said, for the next baby. <laughs> so, guys, I would actually say in my motherhood journey, breastfeeding for me was the best moment. It was just the best time for us. It was our bonding time. It was our intimate time. I really, really, really loved this moment. And it was... It being such a special moment, we actually had to go to the studio and had a photo shoot when we were breastfeeding. Like, I was like, I, I just need to remember these moments because they were just the best. And what better way to remember moments than to just capture them, you know, in pictures. So that, that I would confidently say, I really enjoyed my breastfeeding moments with our son and I was just happy. <laughs> So I really wanted to breastfeed my son until he's two years old, but I'll say he's a big boy now and he has his own plans. <laughs> but I'll say him stopping at 15 months is kind of bittersweet. It's a bittersweet moment for me, but such is life, right? Such is life. These kids also have their own, they start creating their own independence and they start creating their own life and you just have to respect that as you know as a parent you know it's from little things as that <laughs> yeah but that is our life lately he is now a big boy and he's still drinking formula once in a while mostly at night so at night before he goes to bed i'll give him formula of course he's drinking formula water and uh, i've also introduced cocoa now he's drinking cocoa um and he really loves it that is like his favorite drink right now I want to slowly introduce cow's milk and then I can now get him off the formula because <sighs> formula is getting expensive guys. <laughs> I started buying it at around 1400 now it's at 1700 Kenya shillings. That's like $17. <gasps> it's too much but everything is just on the higher end right now so I gotta do what I gotta do right. So yeah that is our uh breastfeeding journey that is how we've stopped breastfeeding and i hope one day he'll look at he'll watch this video and he'll be like oh mom i'm sorry i'm sorry i stopped when you didn't want me to stop <laughs> anyway i'm just kidding so do let me know your breastfeeding stories in the comment section let me know how you're handling it are you a first time mom have you just given birth let me know how the journey is going so far and as always remember to be kind to one another love one another and treasure every minute you spend with one another because tomorrow is not promised Ciao, ciao.